Hello everyone, I am Pratik Pate and today I will be talking about a research work on automatic thermal screening for COVID-19 using machine learning. So in 2020, when COVID-19 uh, virus had started to spread and uh, made a disastrous impact on millions of livelihoods of people, governments started to impose stringent measures to contain and stop the spread of the virus. The stringent measures were like temperature measurement as well as uh, making it uh, mandatory to wear masks in public. So, security personnel, for example, had to measure the temperature by coming in close contact with the other person as well as visually inspect if the person is wearing mask or not. So, in highly populated places, this was a very uh, difficult task to ma maintain. So, our research contributes majorly in how we can automate this COVID-19 screening as well as automate the task of classifying whether the person is wearing mask or not. So, this automated uh, automation was required in places with uh, 24 7 facilities running as well as uh, like hospitals railway stations and tech parks as well as in uh, uh, factories so these locations did not have proper lighting conditions as well as some places required uh, the to maintain the privacy of the users while screening for covid so uh, the challenge is what we faced for the mainly for the task of face detection as well as for mass classification is that the uh, Openly available deep learning models pre-trained on uh, with RGB images uh, poor, perform performed very poorly on uh, images with low lighting conditions. And then to train a deep learning model uh, on using thermal images, there is hardly any data set available uh, of people wearing masks uh, and entering into the campuses. So on top of that, uh, the model which needed was required to have higher inferencing rate on devices uh, when run on devices with low computing power. So to solve these challenges, uh, our research work basically contributes on uh, three th contributes majorly on three things. One is we uh, we open sourced and publicly made available the Niramai thermal image COVID nineteen dataset, and then we propose a novel augmentation method to train a deep learning model for the task of phase detection as well as and mass classification. And then we further validate and compare the trained thermal model with the models uh, openly available that are trained on RGB images. So to talk briefly about the nearby thermal image COVID nineteen dataset that we have, so it has it has three subset data datasets that is thermal surveillance dataset and then the augmented surveillance dataset as well as the lighting dataset. So the thermal images are recorded uh, using the Flurry E seventy five thermal camera. And the image shows the one of the recording setup what we had uh, in one of the tech parks. So the thermal surveillance dataset consists of 902 infrared images of people entering into the campus. And these images consist of 1345 people entering with mask and 145 people without mask. So you can observe there is a lot of imbalance between the dataset of people with mask and without mask. To solve this and make the dataset a little bit more balanced, we considered the openly available face mask data set of RGB images. And then uh, using our augmented novel augmented algorithm method, we uh, created an augmented surveillance data set. That is also what we have um, made it available publicly. So this data set consists of 309 images and this with 443 people with mask as well as 109 people without mask. So augmentation in the augmentation method, so it is a two-step process where we convert a single uh, three channel image to a single channel and then further apply a power law transformation where uh, given an input image i uh, and the g value in the range of 0 to 1 we get a little bit more darker image and uh, which looks like more to a thermal like image so given uh, g equal to 0 which is a completely dark image and g equal to 1 which is similar to an grayscale image so we use a uh, value between the range of 0 0.3 to 0 0.9 so there is a third data set, which is called the lighting data set. The lighting data set consists of thermal images and its corresponding RGB images of 25 participants. The images were captured with and without mass, mass for each participant and were captured in uh, four different lighting conditions. The lighting conditions are categorized using the Lux units. The 0 to 25 Lux units is the darker or completely dark image, whereas 25 to 75 and 75 to 150 Lux units is um, one category where uh, in a room or in a uh, well lit area and uh, lux unit of one greater than 150 is uh, we have captured in outdoor environment 
So the NDS data set can be accessed uh, using GitHub repository and where we have made it publicly available, which is called the NDS scanning data set. The data set consists of thumbnail images as, as well as this uh, annotate, annotation of bounding boxes of faces for the task of face detection, as well as labels with mask and without mask for the class of uh, for the task of mask classification. So the structure of the NTSA data set is shown as uh, the in the image in the slide. So we further in the research work, uh, we propose a pipeline for automated screen, COVID-19 screening and uh, for the task of mass classification. So consider given a uh, thermal image, we first uh, pre-process an image input, uh, thermal image, pre-process the thermal image and then pass it on to the uh, face detection uh, deep learning model where we get the face uh face regions which is used to detect the temp higher temperature of the image of the person and then further on the same line we uh pass it to the mask classifier where it predicts whether the person is wearing mask on so in the image pre-processing block uh, we this is used to remove the uh, hotter artifacts that are there in, at the background and make the foreground more visible and clearer as you can see in the first image, the hotter, due, due to hotter artifact, the, uh, the foreground is less visible and uh, dull. So we uh, use the temperature values and make it concise into 20 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. And after concising, we apply the min max normalization to in the range of 0 to 255. And then the second image of C after the processed image, the foreground is more visible and clear and brighter as well as the hotter objects at the back. So uh, in the face detection block, we considered the pre-processed image uh, from the previous step. And here we use the NTSC data set and uh, we consider two architectures here to train the deep learning model and see if our NTSC data set is beneficial and sufficient for training different architectures as well. And the output gives a bounding box of the faces. So we, the two architectures, what we have used is mobile net v2 SSD as well as v 3 so further for the task of mass detection, we uh, consider the same NTSC data set and, but here we cropped the face regions, what we get from the face, detect, uh, face regions, uh, face detection model. And then we use the mobile net v2 block and um, get the classifier, whether the person is classified result, whether the person is wearing mask or not mask. Further uh, with the experiments and results, we conduct two experiments for the each task. And first experiment is that trained with different architecture using different subsets of NTSC dataset and validate the deep learning model for the performance with different combinations of the NTSC datasets. And then second is compare the RGB and thermal image train model on lighting dataset. So the first for the first task of face detection, we considered YOLO V3 and MobileNet V2 and trained using the thermal surveillance dataset at first and then combination of the dataset, thermal surveillance and the uh, augmented surveillance. And for the both of these data set, as you can see in the uh, study table, we can see for the both of the architectures, uh, the mean IOU as well as the mean average precision improves when we use the combination of thermal surveillance and the augmented surveillance data set. Similarly, uh, for this, the second experiment for the same task is that we compare the trained deep learning model of, on thermal images with the openly available pre-trained RGB models. So here, if you see visual train, uh, the Thermal, tra thermal train deep learning models consistent perform consistently on different lighting conditions of the lighting data set, whereas on uh, the RGB based deep learning models perform poorly on low lighting conditions like 0 to 25 lux or 25 to lux, 25 to 75 lux. Now we conduct the same similar two experiments on the mass classification task. Here in the mobile net v2 architecture, we use the thermal surveillance data set at start and and then further apply a dense layer as well as soft layer, soft soft max layer, and train again on the thermal surveillance data set. And third, uh, a third architecture what we have is the mobile net v2 plus the dense layer, then the soft max layer, but trained using the combination of thermal surveillance data set and the augmented surveillance data set. What we can observe is the third architecture, which is the combination of thermal surveillance and augmented surveillance data set, gives a very uh, improved uh, precision and recall on the data set on the uh, deep learning on the uh, lighting data, test data set compared to other models so considering the best model from the previous study we use that and compare with the existing uh, rgb based deep learning model for the mass task of mass classification and we observe that the uh, 
thermal train mass classifier performs consistently on different lighting conditions whereas the rgb train mass classifier performs poorly on low lighting conditions on 0 to 25 lux so in conclusion our uh, we in our research work we open source our data set uh, we open source thermal surveillance augmented surveillance as well as the lighting data set as part of the ntic database and then we propose a novel augmentation method that helps in improving the performance of the model as well as we observe that uh, the thermal images are invariant to the lighting conditions as opposed to the rgb deep learning rgb based deep learning models i conclude my talk here and thank you for attending